Are you in the market for a high grade professional dive watch? Well, the watch that I have today on the show may be the one you've been looking for. Introducing the all new Seiko Save the Ocean Limited Edition 1965 Modern Reinterpretation. And right off the bat, you get a high impression of quality when you handle this piece. Seiko has lowered the number of units once again about six years ago when the SLA-017 released, they made 2,000 units. And then we had the 043 SLA at 1,700 units. This one, 1,300 units. I'm ignoring the other two variants, the high beat and the beams collaboration, which was a one-off at 300 units. So Seiko seems to be making a little bit less every time. And that could be because they dialed in the demand. I find Seiko is pretty good with this, but sometimes they do overshoot it. By the way, the 017 is still holding its value. Some people argue it's the best one, but this new one is definitely making a case for itself. The case has much more character. So the old SLAs had flat, clean, simple lines. This one has a gorgeous Zeratsu hand-polished bevel that travels along the case and at the bottom of the case, giving it that SPB 63 MAS character, which some people have taken issue with because that's the entry level model. But there is nothing wrong with adding character to a watch. It looks fantastic. And that bottom bevel is carved out almost like a cushion style case, much more aggressive than the SLAs of the past giving this new SLA the 63 masses best characteristic, a lower center of gravity, and it wears much better. It has a much more balanced and planted feel when you're wearing it, and I love it. So I'm very happy with that. It's clear this is a 62 MAS, but reimagined. Now let's check out those dimensions. I got 40.2 millimeters in diameter, but the bezel overhangs and Seiko is using that as the actual diameter. So the bezel, 41.3. And you know what? Rolex did this as well. On the new Explorer, the edge of the bezel is 36 millimeter, but the case was, I forget, 35.4, 35.6, something like that. But I remember the bezel was what Rolex was using for the measurement. So Seiko is doing the same here. And the thickness is 13.1 millimeters. That's exactly one millimeter thinner than the old SLA 043. And it even has a double domed sapphire, but it's tucked in nicely. We got drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 47.6. Okay, excellent dimensions here. This one will wear true to size at 41, maybe 41 and a half on the wrist. Now, speaking of the bezel, the insert, it's not ceramic. It's that typical black titanium carbon coating on top of stainless steel. We've seen it before on the SPB 213, which I reviewed earlier. It's absolutely beautiful. When the light catches, you can see the blue pop and it gives the watch a ton of energy, a bright look. Now let's have a listen. Okay, so it has a dampened smooth feel. The clicks are a little bit more precise than the 63 MAS. For some reason, they don't feel as precise as the SLA 043, but I don't think they're using a different system. I can't imagine it. So it could be all in my fingertips or head. <laughs> and we got a 6.2 millimeter coin edge screw down crown giving this watch 200 meters of water resistance. Unfortunately, the crown is not signed. I wish they put the word Seiko, the full word, not the S. I like the word Seiko. I think it should have had it here. That is absolutely a shame, especially on these high-end reimagination reissues. So that's a big, big negative for me. The case is coated with Seiko super hard coating, so it should be relatively scratch resistant. It's 316L, you're not getting ever brilliant steel here, but you are getting a lower price. The price is now 2,900 USD. Okay, so $1,600 less than the model three years ago, SLA 043. That's a huge amount of savings. And you're getting the same high quality movement. So that brings it in line with the Marine Master 300s, SLA Umiras that are part of the permanent collection. So I don't think this one should be limited. The dial has an embossed 
astrolabe pattern, which is an astrological tool that sailors use to help navigate the seas. So that's kind of cool, but it has a busy look. It may even make you dizzy. And I'm wondering how this would look with just a basic flat or sunray dial. We got Seiko, Prospex X, Automatic, Divers 200, and a gorgeous raised silver paint. It looks fantastic. The hour markers are pressed. They look taller than the old one, so more surface area. The loom should look good. Let's check it out. The loom's performance is in between the two tiers. It's much more powerful than the 63 MAS. It could be a different formula because in daylight, the 63 MAS loom is more of a whitish color and the SLA has a very saturated, almost like a faux patina, but I don't think it's faux patina. Maybe it's a new formula. So this was a happy surprise, but of course the top G, the SLA043 has brighter loom with a longer duration, thanks to its deeply filled pressed indices. Even in daylight, the SLA043, the loom looks better. It has a tiny hue to it, it's not too bright white to look cheap, and it's not too saturated to look faux patina. It's that perfect Seiko loom that looks just right. So for the application method, the duration of loom, and the intensity, SLA043 is far superior. But the 065 is actually pretty decent, so I'm happy about that. The hands are 63 MAS style, half brushed, half high polish, excellent legibility, and everything lines up perfectly, proving Seiko can do it if you pay them to. <laughs> and tell me, how are you feeling the chaptering? I prefer no chaptering, like the 043 and the 63. Okay, we got the 8L35B, 26 joules, 288 VPH hack hand wine automatic with 50 hours of power reserve. Amazing amplitude, 320, no error. We got three, two, one, and the fourth and final round plus one. The movement is rhodium plated for longevity. It's hand assembled in the Grand Seiko studio even some hand polishing on the escape teeth, and it does use MEMS technology. It's fantastic, and look at these numbers, and the fourth and final round plus three. The strap is very soft, but very flimsy, the opposite of the SLA043, which was very stiff and cheap feeling. So we got two extremes here, I'm not happy. 20 millimeters tapering down to 18, I need a good FKM rubber, but luckily that's an easy fix, so it's not too big of an issue. The finishing, I would say, is about spot on with my Tudor Black Bay 58. And if this thing was 38 millimeters, like the original 62 MAS, and even at 13 mil thick, I would take it. I would sell my 58 so fast. But Seiko has still not made the perfect 62 MAS for me. Well, they did in 1965 but I want a new one with water resistance and sapphire and all the good stuff. So which is your favorite 62 MAS? This one has some good things going for it, but if you're still not convinced and you want a high-end Seiko, check out the two videos on the right of your screen right now. And I'll see you in the next one.